Welcome to Chandwell. This is a quick update to show what I've been working on over the last couple of weeks. I wanted to start the railway arches, which was February's task to get the viaduct complete this year. This is where I left off at the end of January. I'd done the hill down to this level, and then I had five arches to fill in. And I wanted to base these upon the scale scenes arch kit with the workshops underneath. But I wanted to personalise them to make them something unique to Chandwell. This is what I've done this month. So I started with this nice flat area at the bottom of the hill. Using a piece of software called Inkscape and some textures I downloaded from textures.com, I started to mock up the fronts of some industries which would fit into this gap here. I used various textures and colours and text and layered them together until I had five industries that looked interesting to me. Here's one testing to fit. I had this join to consider as well. It wasn't very nice, but in the end I just covered it with an extra layer of cobblestones, which covered it up quite nicely. Although there's space for five arches, there's only enough room for two of them to actually have open doors so you can see the arch interior. These were built as per the scale scenes kit, which involves putting the back wall on and then curving card around to form the inside surface. I wanted four of the arches to have lights. Two of them that have got the closed doors will shine just through the windows. The other two will shine in the interior itself. To that end, I added four LEDs. This one that doesn't go back is I've added a false back to and printed out the picture of an inside of a factory just to go behind the window. This one has got even less space behind the window. So I glued a picture of the factory interior just to the baseboard support that you see here. The other two, I drilled a little hole in the inside of the arch and just poked the LED through. Once the five were complete, I inserted it under the baseboard and glued the bottom into place. I then had a problem with the top, which I'll explain now. So after the bottom of the five arches were in place and the glue had set with the ruler in place, the fronts were pushing out quite a lot and the top was very wiggly. What I've come up with is this solution and I won't know whether it's worked until tomorrow or not. I've pushed a ruler against the top of the arches, holding it in place just by the force of gravity or whatever it's called from these tins. I've then used some standard milliput which interestingly is the same colour as the baseboard. I've shoved it in, pushed it in as tightly as I can into the gaps, which is kind of pushing the wavy card back out towards the ruler. The top of the card is more or less straight. So I'm hoping that when this dries, it will stick to it and not budge forward again. I suppose if it doesn't stick, at least I'll have a smoothish surface against which I can glue it. So let's wait and see, first thing tomorrow, how this has worked. So it's the following morning, let's see how it's worked. The milliput is quite hard, so it's set. So let's take away these cans and see how it looks. I think that's quite good. Yep, it's stuck. The arches are straight. They follow on from this wall quite nicely. I think that's a success. I am really, really pleased with that. Super. Once the arches were stuck and straight, I added a little bit of extra detailing. I added these planks outside this place and I added some signs to the garage and outside the front of some of the businesses. Then it was to test the lighting. The lighting looks wonderful. The kind of yellowy, warm, white, LEDs just adds that nice warmth to the inside. 
The garage has got a picture of some tyres on the back. It really looks good from a distance. Finally, I added the ledge and the wall along the top and finished off the final details. Let's take a walk from Chandwell Station down the cobbled back lane alongside the arches and down to the workshops. You can see the light here reflecting off the varnish. I've only applied one coat of enamel gloss varnish here so far. I use gloss because if you use matte straight away it soaks into the paper and leaves a residue behind of the matting agent. So I use a few, a few coats of gloss and then one final coat of matte. I've not done that yet, I was in too much of a hurry to show this video. Thank you.